Welcome to our second to last lecture video, this time on Claudio Monteverdi. Monteverdi is one of the most influential composers of all time, revolutionizing the Renaissance style and setting many of the rules in his writings that Bach and Handel would take and run with in the Baroque. Truly most of modern notation and compositional techniques can pay a near direct homage to Monteverdi. Enough praise, let's talk about the life of this magnificent composer and his piece Lasciatemi Morire. Claudio Monteverdi was born in Cremona, Italy, where he studied with Marcantonio Ingenieri, the maestro di cappella there, or the master of singing. Monteverdi progressed quickly both as a player of the viola da braccio, a predecessor to the modern viola, shown here, and as a composer. He played in several court ensembles in Verona and Milan as a teen, and at 15 years old, the first book of motets was published in 1582. A book of his madrigals was published the following year. These are both choral idioms, so we won't concern ourselves too much with them, but still remarkably impressive. In 1590, he was appointed as a player in the court of the Gonzagas in Mantua, one of the centers for musical innovation in Europe at the time. Here, he would teach voice, compose madrigals, and conducted a female vocal ensemble modeled after the famous Concerto delle Donne from Ferrara. In 1612, the Duke Gonzaga died, and most of the musical staff was let go. But Monteverdi quickly landed a position at St. Mark's Basilica in Venice. He gained widespread acclaim and held substantial power in Venice, even being able to welcome musical guests such as Heinrich Schütz in 1628 from Germany. In 1630, Venice was hit with a plague that killed roughly 50,000 residents. This forced Monteverdi be to become more reclusive, and he entered priesthood in 1632. His compositional activity then turned to opera while he focused more on his family. Monteverdi would travel to Mantua in 1643 and died shortly thereafter at the age of 76. Monteverdi was a transitional figure in music history and therefore wrote in two distinct styles, known as the Prima Pratica, which was typical of the Renaissance, featured instruments largely not interacting directly with one another, but being more of a collection of independent lines that sometimes lined up for poignant moments, and the Seconda Pratica, which would come to prominence in the upcoming Baroque period and featured vertical harmonies, solo vocal melodies, and basso continual accompaniment. Monteverdi not only wrote in both of these styles, but also was instrumental in defining the changes between them. He was criticized by others for breaking the rules of counterpoint detailed in the Prima Pratica style. Monteverdi then clapped back with a dedication in defense of modern writing in his fifth book of madrigals. Lasciatemi morire is from Monteverdi's second opera, Ariana. The complete score of Ariana is lost, and all of it that survives is this aria from Ariana herself. This was later called by Monteverdi as the most essential part of the work, so we're very fortunate that this is the piece that survives. This song, known as a lament, was published in several forms by Monteverdi, including the solo song that we will focus on, a five-part madrigal, and a sacred monody titled Pianto della Madonna, or The Crying of Mary. The success of this song led to laments being a prominent feature in later operas. You can hear the natural text declamation highlighting how the Italian would be spoken. Monteverdi uses dissonance against the accompaniment to heighten the drama of the text. The significance of the words drive the melodic line, not any classical forms or balance. This is in part because those rules had not yet been established. This piece was fundamental in the growth of opera as a genre and storytelling device. And that's the only piece for Monteverdi. See you next time for our final composer, Vincenzo Bellini. Have a good one.